So, uh, so far, we have covered the four bases huh, for understanding the process of practicing shamatha and upasana. We have explained as far as we are not deliberated, so we have only two basic objects, which are the mental images, either with uh, differentiation, sadhi, kalpa, or without differentiation. So, uh, strictly speaking, unless we have the direct experience of the object of liberation. So uh, we cannot join shamatha and vipassana uh, in, into one because we are, so to say, not reaching the uh, eightfold noble path, middle path. We can only uh, experience the middle path really as it is if the object is cannot be grasped if it is suchness or nirvana if the object can be grasped from the eightfold noble path cannot appear together this is very important to understand the eightfold noble path can appear together under the condition that the object is the object of liberation, however we call it. Hmm? Right. So, uh, strictly speaking, the third object only comes when we have uh, some experience of the object of liberation hmm? that we have explained. Then, when we have the object of liberation, then we can put the shamatha and vipassana together. In this tradition, even though strictly speaking, we can only put shamatha and vipassana together, when we put shamatha and vipassana together, then uh, if we use sa vikalpa uh, Pratidimba, if we use the uh, object, the mental object with differentiation, then we are, according to the Abhidharma Samuchaya and according to Yogacara Bhumi Shastra, we are using uh, the Adi Mokshiki Manasikara, huh? the uh, attention based on resolution. Hmm? This is very important to understand. We are using attention, uh, this uh, division, in order to master meditation, we need to master two types of attention. Mm -hmm. The attention based on resolution mm -hmm. and the tattva manasikara, the attention based on and reality as it is. These two attentions, when we master, we uh, can become the masters of meditation. So, uh, when we use Savikalpa Pratikimba, when we use uh, the mental object with differentiation, then, as we have explained before, um, then we can apply. Hmm? Then we we apply the uh, the attention with resolution, and we uh, determine the vishesha uh, lakshana, the special characteristic of the object. Hmm? 
Now we are practicing the non-dualistic meditation. So the special characteristic of the object is actually that it comes from the mind, it appears from the mind. It is the, uh, the mental picture. Hmm? It is the chitta nimitta. As we will see, the object of vipassana is the chitta nimitta. And in vipassana, we are changing this chitta nimitta. We will learn this today how to practice shamatha and vipassana according to the yogacara. Hmm? We change this chitta nimitta and as we apply the mind to the differentiated object, we apply it with uh, as we, we apply it with the conceptual understanding. So um, through this understanding that we investigate either huh? the special characteristics of the object or we investigate as in Yogacara that the object actually is uh, the uh, appearance of the mental image in the mind. Mm -hmm. And this mental image, of course, is not real. If we have already the third object, which we have explained, puts the things together. Putting the things together means putting the worldly experience together huh? on the base of the vision and the worldly experience together on the base of common characteristics. Hmm? The common characteristics are impermanence. And this belongs to the worldly reality, but it is also the suchness which takes us beyond the, uh, the worldly experience. Suchness is emptiness, and emptiness is also the ultimate reality, as we have explained, and also the relative reality. Both are emptiness. Emptiness is one, but it, is, it appears as two, as worldly reality and as the highest reality. And to the highest reality, we come through the uh, Nirvikalpa Pratibhima, through the image without differentiation. And as we have explained, the image without differentiation we use in Shamatha. And so in shamatha, we, because we are not changing the image, first we have to get into the samadhi. As we will see uh, today, we, we will explain the shamatha and vipassana, how to practice shamatha and vipassana. First, to practice uh, vipassana, we, we need samadhi. Therefore, Samadhi has to come first. Samahita. Chitam yatha bhutam pasati. Only the mind in samadhi can see things as they are. This is vipassana. See the worldly aspect of the thing means to see the, the impermanence and see the ultimate reality means uh, see emptiness, which leads, so to say, beyond impermanence, which is beyond impermanence. Ultimately, and this is the aim of the Bodhisattva meditation, there is no difference. The reality is one between the worldly and the uh, supermundane. But first, we have to make a clear distinction. Hmm? That things that in Yogacara, the things we can differentiate can only be the worldly reality, characterized by impermanence. The uh, emptiness, in emptiness, we do not differentiate. That is why uh, 
the emptiness is the non dualistic understanding of nirvana. Now, when the mind does not move, you can make the mind not move either with the help of the object, but you can also make the mind not to move without an object. If you don't take any sign whatsoever, then the things are moving, but the mind is not moving. And the non dualistic meditation is to put these two together. Like uh, what actually moves, and the condition for the movement is the mind. This is the same. Then you will find in Kuiman Sutta the two monks arguing the, the wind is moving or the flag is moving. The Kuiman says, Your mind is moving, say. So if the mind does not take any sign of the object, it does not move. But yet the movement is there, but the mind does not move. So this, uh, to make the mind to not move, you need the, uh, the uh, tattva manasikara. You need the attention to the object as it really is in the worldly reality. Everything moves. But in the ultimate reality, the movement is illusionary. So, uh, according to the Abhidharma Samucharya and so on, through the uh, Shamata, you get access to the, to the Vigyakti Matrata or to the Chitta Matrata to the mind only. And so as a Vipassana, you get access to the uh, illusionary nature of the images. When you penetrate the illusionary nature of the images, you eventually hmm, apply the uh, Tattva Manasikara to the reality. Hmm. Uh, the reality is suchness, and suchness is one. So, according to Abhidharma Samuchaya, when you use the uh, object without the differentiation, mental object without differentiation, then you actually can penetrate the common characteristics of the object. If the mind moves, it is a worldly mind. If the mind does not move, it is adopting to the uh, real reality. The mind which does not move for a long time becomes a purified mind. So let us see now how this, uh, actually we get access to this understanding of these four objects. How we study Shamatha and Vipassana. And uh, in order to understand it, we go to the next question. It is very important, so we will analyze it in some detail. Hmm? Uh, Maitreya asks How can enlightened beings seek tranquility? Huh? So you seek tranquility. You seek tranquility when your mind is not yet at peace. So uh, you can interpret and some interpret it, some commentaries interpret it before you realize that the direct experience of the highest reality, you seek for tranquility. Mm -hmm. But you can also uh, take it in a different sense. You, as soon as your mind is agitated, 
you seek tranquility to understand things as they really are. You have to bring your mind to tranquility. Tranquility in shamatha. You translate as tranquility, it is all right. So first you have to bring your mind to the state of shamatha. And this is done in this tradition and in the Mahayana tradition in general, in Chinese tradition, in Tibetan tradition, when we speak of shamatha, according to the Abhidharma, Abhidharma also, the Abhidharma Kosha, the, uh, I have explained yesterday, the shamatha means eight samapatis, the four absorptions in the subtle form, four absorptions in the arupas, in this tradition, in the non dualistic tradition as taught in China, Tibet, the shamatha means uh, nine chitta stitis, the nine abodes of mind through which one goes before attaining samadhi. Samadhi is a ninth stage. In order to attain this ninth stage, you need familiarity with the eighth stage, which is the one pointedness of the mind. We will talk about these nine stages. Today we will explain them, but let us first answer uh, this question. So how can enlightened being seek tranquility? That means, uh, how he can bring the mind into balance. Without bringing the mind into balance, he cannot practice shamatha. He also can practice vipassana. We will explain the first, the real shamatha starts when the mind is at peace, which is a sixth stage in this nine chitta stitis. This seeking, uh, tranquility explains this uh, stage from first chitta stiti <coughs> to the fifth chitta stiti. Yeah. We will explain that. These are the stages when the uh, mindfulness and uh, awareness Appearing in the mind. Or you can uh, practice vipassana. You can investigate the, the own characteristic of the object. It is a uh, you're the object of the mind, and this object of the mind, when it appears, it appears in the impermanent mind, and the impermanent mind is a mind which holds to the sign of the object. So you go into the Pashana. And a perfect observation, that the text says how to be good, observation means the Pashana. He translates from Chinese and Chinese because it is one, which means observation. How to be good in observation? How to be good in vipassana? Based on these four kinds of objects. As we have said, strictly speaking, you can combine shamatha and vipassana when the object is ultimate reality, but you can also combine them, as we will see, in the state of tranquility. When the mind is sinking, you need to lift it up. When the mind is excited, you need to stop the excitement. And when the mind is pure, you let go. This comes later in the text. So now 
uh, we come finally to this very important part, how to practice uh, shamatha and vipassana. The Buddha said, enlightening being, that this means a bodhisattva, Caref listen carefully to the teachings I have devised for them. And he avoids the enumeration of the 12 uh, parts of the Pripitaka, which comes in the Chinese text. Yeah? Starting with the uh, sutras, uh, then Gaya uh, part, then the Vyakarana, then the Udanas, the Itilutakas, the Nidanas, yeah? and so on, the Jatakas, and uh, finally the Dipula, Abhuta Dharmas. These are the 12 or sometimes nine parts of the Pratitaka. He did not translate that part. He just says that I, I have devised for them. But these 12 parts are important because later he again speaks about practicing Vipassana with a small object or great object or innumerable object. So uh, then he explains five things connected with the uh, Shruta Maya Pragya reason in order as Yogacara Bhumi Shastra on the base of this text also explains how to listen correctly. Hmm? Unless you listen correctly, you will not contemplate correctly. Unless you not listen correctly and contemplate correctly, you will not be able to meditate correctly. Hmm? This is very important to understand. So that is why he mentions these 12 parts of the Tripitaka. <clears throat> what you actually meditate on is the meaning of explained in the Tripitaka, in the 12 parts of the Tripitaka. This is the object of your meditation. You meditate on these concepts, which are explained in the Tripitaka, in the sutras or in these divisions of the sutras which are saint or um, which are um, direct sayings of the Buddha, which are in verses, which are in prose, and so on, many divisions. So first comes Bosa, uh, uh, he uh, listens well. Huh? Listens well is also explained in the Yogacara Bhumi Shastra. Uh, in order to listen well, you have to uh, you have to get rid of um, unnecessary objects of thinking. Huh? Is uh, is uh, that's uh, where does Buddha go after Nirvana? Is the uh, world the final or is it the uh, uh, infinite? Uh, is uh, this uh, are completely useless metaphysical questions which are not um, helping for praxis of shamatha and depression? So uh, you have to. Uh, You have to have this yoga chara bhumi shastra. You have to listen correctly. You have to have concentrated mind. And you concentrate the mind in the meaning, not bringing the meanings which are not connected. This that should be meditated on the objects of meditation. For that, you have to concentrate. So, 
he uh, translates this uh, hearing well as assimilate them. Huh? When you hear well without useless thinking and concentrated, you can assimilate what the speaker is um, trying to tell you. Then become familiar with them. Huh? That means you can uh, you know uh, the words and the sentences, you can recite them, huh? and that's how the text directly says in Chinese, you receive them well. Huh? You receive them well, it means you can recite them, you can remember them in your mind, you can penetrate the meaning. Huh? So uh, in, a, in Chinese, there are two meanings. He put them together, become familiar with them. In Chinese, you, you receive them well and recite them. Reflect on them. So it means uh, you can uh, actually memorize them so that uh, you don't need to when you meditate, you don't need to think about them anymore. You have clearly grasp the meaning and arrive at insight into them. Huh? Arrive and in, insight into them. It means uh, you can directly see the the meaning. Huh? That means uh, literally in Chinese. Tian Shan it means this darshana, you can directly see them through the meaning which you can penetrate. Darshana means a direct penetration. So that much is concerned with the Shulta Maya Pratya. Is wisdom based on hearing. When you have wisdom based on hearing, then you can use the wisdom based on uh, reflection. Hmm? Chinta maya pragya. And how to use the wisdom based on reflection? Then in solitude, they attentively meditate on this principle for careful reflection. That means uh, in Chinese text, Shang Siwei, you, uh, you reflect according to Yogacara Bhumi Shastra, Chinta Maya Prajna means you are uh, weighing in your mind and reflecting in your mind uh, on the meaning and uh, so the first part according to the commentary the first Suhuji Shruta Maya Pragya you get the Samyak Dashti that's why we had you understand well by direct seeing, you understand well the meaning. So you get the Samyak Dashti, the right view. Then through the Chinta Maya Pratya, you get the uh, Samyak Samkalpa, the right thinking. Hmm? In order to get the right thinking, you have to go into solitude. Hmm? Turn the mind inside and reflect away the meaning in your mind. That is what we call a careful reflection. And then you come to the meditation, then they attentively meditate on the inner stream of the meditating consciousness. In a stream of the meditating consciousness, 
Let us see how it is explained in Chinese. Yeah, it's all right. How you meditate by the uh, concentrated attention. In order to meditate, you need the concentrated attention. If you don't have concentrated attention, how can you meditate? When they practice correctly in this way, he uh, shortens in Chinese, it is much more important, uh, much more complex. Yeah? Uh, then, then having a, a dwell correctly for a long time on this uh, meaning, on this uh, inner, as revealed in the inner stream of consciousness by the uh, concentrated attention, then the uh, uh, pressure of the huh? the pressure of the is a very important word in yoga and also in Buddhist yoga. It is the opposite of daushtulyam. Hmm? Pressure of the uh, they translate into English as pliancy. Huh? In the Pali tradition, this pliancy is connected with lahuta, the lightness, with mudita, the softness, with ujita, the straightness. Huh? All the, and also pliancy, all these are there. Huh? In a Chinese tradition, it is translated as Qin An, which means lightness and peace. I translate it as uh, clarity and relaxation. This is the best English translation I have found. Pliancy is all right, but uh, what is important here, you get the clarity. You get the clarity which penetrates the body and the mind. And this clarity which penetrates the body and the mind uh, is kind of luminous. It, bring, it brings relaxation. Relaxation of the body is connected to the relaxation of the mind. Because the body and the mind, as Visuddhimagga, even Mahabharata, the Bhishma explains is like a blind man and a cripple. The body cannot do anything without the mind. The mind cannot do anything, cannot move without the body. So our situation is when we use body and the mind together, like the in order to work correctly. The cripple sits on the shoulders of the blind man and tells him, go right, go left, and so on. And this is how we work. The body and the mind work together. If we don't have body, our mind can move because it moves due to prana or life faculty, as it is called in Buddhism. So this uh, Prana is like the horse, and the mind is like the horseman. This is how we work. So, the pliancy has to be the uh, lightness and peace, or relaxation and clarity of the body and the mind. So, when you attain shamatha, you attain this uh, pliancy or relaxation and clarity of the body and the mind. So you can sit for a long time because your mind is at peace and you are not 
disturbed by the outer object. So when uh, you get this pliancy of the body and the mind, it is called the shamatha. Now, this uh, shamatha, as we have explained, has this uh, nine chitta stiti, because it does not come directly explained in the text, I will explain now. Mm -hmm. In order to appease the mind completely, and we have explained uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. and we, you need the uh, shamatha in order to get the uh, state of effortless attention, state of effortless attention. Or it is called in the Yoga Chara Bhumi Shastra Anabhoga Avahana. Avahana means actually transporting. Avahana means transporting. In order to connect with the object, you have to transport the mind into the object. If you do it effortlessly, Without abhoga and anaboga, these are very important words in yoga also. When you study the commentaries of on the Patanjali Yoga Sutras, you will find like in Vachaspati Mishra, the long discussion on the abhoga and anaboga. In order to get samadhi, first you have to learn to bring the mind to the object smoothly without, uh, without uh, using too much effort or without using too little effort. If you use too much effort, it is abhoga. If you use too little effort, it is anabhoga. When you have equal effort, perfection of effort, you can get one-pointedness of the mind. And when you practice one-pointedness of the mind, continually, you get samadhi. But in order to get into the higher state, first you have to appease the mind. And that is a sixth stage. So let us now take these stages one by one. The first stage is called stapayati. Stapayati, Shenzhen translates as may, may do. Let the mind dwell inside. Dwelling on the meditation object means dwelling inside. But if you are a beginner in meditation, you will use Sa bala avahan. You will use transport your mind to the object by force. Then there is no appeasement. As long as you transport your mind to the object by force, how will you get appeasement? Impossible. But as explained here, because you have got the Shruta Maya Pragya and uh, Chinta Maya Pragya. Therefore, even though you are struggling, you continue to meditate. Because you continue to meditate, there will be continuation of the meditation. Let's call Samstapayati. Samstapayati, you, you still use Sabala Avaham. You still use force to bring your mind to the object. So you have no appeasement whatsoever. So what will happen? 
because you see it does not work this way, you discover that uh, the only way to get the mind to the object without force is to use the force of mindfulness. And this is the third stage. You start to use the force of mindfulness. So mindfulness is what makes the mind stable. That is why it is in Pali, it is explained as the chikasa apilapana, the not wobbling of the mind. When the mind does not wobble, it can remember the object of attention. And when you remember the object of the attention, the mind will stabilize. You will not run around with other objects. And so, uh, as Yogacara Bhumi Shastra explains, in order to practice meditation, you have to understand the hatus of meditation and you have to remember the object of meditation. Two things. Causes of meditation has to be clearly explained in your mind. What is your chinta your shrutamaya and chintamaya pragya, the wisdom through hearing and wisdom through contemplation. You have weighted the object in your mind. You understand it clearly. Therefore, uh, you understand very clearly also how to use the mindfulness. When you use mindfulness, you don't uh, need much force to bring your mind to the object. And then, you will remember the object, and whenever the mind leaves the object, you will immediately bring it back, not by force, but by mindfulness. So you get some already understanding of what is meditation about. Meditation is about uh, the sublimation of the mind. Hmm? Purifying the mind. This is a job of shamatha and vipassan. Now you cannot sublimate the mind without the, the power of mindfulness. So this stage is called avastapayati. It means as soon as your mind leaves the object, you remember you have left the object and you bring your mind back to the object. So you don't let it wander around, you don't let it wobble. So the mind can stabilize. Then, upastapayati, the fourth stage, it means your mind already settles down on the object. So you get some clear idea what is meditation about. If your mind is not settled on the object, if your power of mindfulness has not criticized, it has not stabilized, you have not clear understanding of um, meditation and you will always, for some reason or the other, you will feel unfit comfortable with meditation because you feel uncomfortable unless you have this wisdom from hearing and from contemplation, you will have no interest in meditation. Now you know how to use the power of mindfulness, so you develop more and more interest in meditation. So your mind now gets stabilized, but it is still not appeasement. Hmm? Why? The power of awareness has not yet come fully to expression. So now you 
can concentrate your mind because the mindfulness is a base for concentration. But when the mind is concentrated and not being connected with awareness, the concentrated mind has a tendency to sinking because the concentrated mind is a deep mind and deep mind is close to the bhavanga or to the alaya and the images may appear from that mind. So your attention will not be taken from outside of it, but from the inner images. So you may feel very comfortable, but the object of meditation may lose clarity. You cannot practice deep shamatha and vipassana with non-clear object. It's impossible. So at this stage, you may sit for a long time, you may be comfortable, but without a clear object, you cannot succeed in possible. So the next stage is called Dhammayati. Huh? The, with awareness, he uh, subdues the gross tendency of mind to sinking or to excitement. This excitement can also come from the outside, but here you have already mindfulness, it does not come from outside, it can come from the inner images. What inner images can emerge, you don't know. Then you come if you subdue the gross tendency to excitement, audatya, or to laya, to lethargy, then you can appease your mind. So this is shamatha. This is a sixth stage. You have not yet attained. Strictly speaking, samadhi, but you are in a stage of the mind and body feeling relaxed, clear, light. So at this stage, you can balance your mind with awareness. Awareness is what purifies the mind. And the mindfulness is the means for awareness to purify the mind. Without the mindfulness, the awareness will not purify the mind. So, um, if you have this uh, lightness, clarity, pliancy, relaxation, then automatically you will have faith in what you're doing. Shraddha, then you will um, continue your practice, you will exercise. Yayana, you will have chanda, you will have desire to enthusiasm for your practice. So all of these conditionings will accompany the state of prashadhi. So uh, you can remove the grossness from the body and the mind. Mm -hmm. So you may feel uncomfortable in the body if you have some distortions in the body. But you are able to ignore it because you feel lightness, pliancy, ease, relaxation, clarity. So this is shamatha. Now, if you want to go further into samadhi, 
then you there is still something to do. In the state of shamatha, the tendency of the mind to sinking and to excitement become very slight. That's why you can sit for a long, long time. But these tendencies are still there. So you will have to apply the antidotes. If the mind is sinking, you will have to lift it up. And you lift it up because you have applied will to investigate the object. As Visuddhimagga explains. So basically, you have to apply will to avoid the sinking of the mind. But the will is accompanied by investigation of the object. The vitaka and this uh, the effort, this uh, virya, all these things are implied in the way. Then, if your mind is excited, then you will have to stop it. Hmm? Stop this. In Chinese, it is uh, translated literally by stopping. So, uh, stopping means appeasing it. And when the mind is uh, again in the state of the balance, then you have to let go. When the mind becomes pure again, you let go. In this stage, the mind becomes very subtle. So already you see in the seventh stage, which is called the view pasha mayati, you already see in order to appease the mind completely, you cannot use too much effort to stop your mind. You cannot see also too much effort. Too little effort. When the mind is sinking, you have to use chetana, but not too much. Too much is abhoga. When the mind is excited, you have to stop it by using the way, but again, not too much. So too much is abhoga, too little is anabhoga. Hmm? It, you use uh, the mind is sinking, you are using uh, this, you are using too much room, then it will not work. If the mind is excited, you are uh, using uh, too little will, it will also not work. So eventually, when you balance your mind in the state of appeasement, you come to the full appeasement. Full appeasement, you neither use abhoga nor anaboga, you use a continuous equal effort. When you use a continuous equal, equal effort, your mind can attain one pointedness. When you practice one pointedness, you can get some idea. Hmm? So these are the stages, the preparatory stages for shamatha, explained here as uh, bringing the mind to prashnapri, to the relaxation of this, which is uh, establishing your mind on the meditation object, establishing the mind inside, let the image of the uh, what you use as meditation object 
continue hmm? then uh, use uh, mindfulness power to so that you immediately return your mind back when it starts uh, going away then uh, establish it completely on the, the power of mindfulness and then tamayati so that there are no big swings in your mind hmm? nowadays you can measure uh, scientifically, hmm, with the electrodes, how the mind is wobbling. When you appease it, it becomes a small. Then finally, when there is no more effort, then it becomes equal. Then you get the one pointedness of the mind. When this one pointedness of the mind con continues, it is samadhyati. Hmm? So, stapayati, samstapayati. Avastapayati, Upastapayati, Damayati, Shamayati, Upashamayati, Ekoti Karoti, and Samadhyati, the nine stages. So here actually it is only explained up to the stage of sixth stage. In the sixth stage, you can connect, as we will see, Shamata and Upashama. Unless you have attained the sixth stage, as the next question discussed, you are not practicing shamatha, you are adopting to the shamatha. Shamatha anuloma. Unless you have attained the prashrabdi, you are not also practicing vipassana, you are practicing vipassana anuloma. You are adapting to the vipassana. So strictly speaking, you can uh, use the mental object with differentiation or mental object without differentiation according to your need only when you have reached this stage of shamatha. That is here, sixth stage. And now we come to uh, Vipassana. Vipassana is very interesting, and very difficult to understand. Now, remember, we are talking about the non-dualistic meditation. So, but this stages of Vipassana can be also applied to, to when you work with the object, and they can be also applied uh, when you work without the object. Hmm? This is difficult to understand. When you work without the object, your mind will also create images and start moving. Hmm? So you have to appease it. And how you appease it? But you again uh, pick up an object hmm? like a breast. And then, when you are in a state of appeasement, you can discard an object. But in that, you can only really succeed when you get into the stage of samadhi, where the mind does not have any even slight tendency to move. Now, when you become uh, Buddha, the Buddha's mind always stays in the stage of Anabhoga Manasika. He does not need actually any Manasika. Anabhoga Manasika means no Manasika really. You are aware of what's going on. You actually clearly reflected in the mirror of your mind, but your mind does not move. This is a state of Buddha. Why it does not move? Because you have already investigated all the object on the base of the analytical meditation, 
and on the base of the non analytic meditation. And this analytical meditation, you saw the Mahayana tradition, you can only you can also understand that theoretically that it is like that, it is a correct view, but it is a correct view in the world, not a correct view beyond the world. So you definitely have to understand the correct view, but the correct view can also be understood in the non-dualistic way, which is images in the mind, this Pratidimba, they are not real. They are conceptual images. That's why he is translates for the previous conceptual image, these uh, uh, different aggregates and the constituent parts of aggregates, the chetasitas and so on, they are different in different traditions because how you see them will is uh, given how you uh, conceptualize them. If you conceptualize them according to the um, Sarvastivana, you will see according to the Sarvastivana. If you conceptualize them according to Theravada, you will see them according to Theravada. So, this is what makes the Buddhism, the Buddhist study, so interesting. And this is why Yogacara is so important. We see according to how we conceptualize our mind. But this conceptualizing of the mind, you have to go beyond it. So the non-dualistic meditation, such emphasis on the apisamaya, the direct vision. As long as you are conceptualizing, you are in the parikalpika, you are in the fabricated reality. And the Parinishpana is free from the Parikalpika. It is free from all fabricated. So then it becomes one reality, the true reality of dependent origination, which is emptiness. Emptiness is one. Suchness is one. There are not two suchnesses, not two, em two emptinesses. So now we come to Vipassana. We have appeased the mind, so we can practice Vipassana. And it starts here. After having attained the prashrabdi, the pliancy of mind and body, the clarity and relaxation, lightness of the mind and body, when the mind and body are at peace. So uh, he uh, practices, he translates here, by attainment of physical and mental ease as a basis, in respect to the images on which the concentration within those useful uh, contemplation focuses intently. It is a rather, rather difficult <laughs> translation. Uh, there is no such thing as useful. Uh, let me translate it. So, uh, in respect to these uh, images, to these pratibhimbas, which he contemplated with uh, samadhi. Hmm? This, this makes it more clear. Hmm? He 
G then, uh, I better translate from Chinese, G then investigates uh, resolutes about and let go the uh, mental images. So you have uh, three stages of vipassana. It is very important to use the, uh, the uh, commentaries or to use uh, yoga chara bhumi shastra. Without that, it will not be clear. In order to penetrate the vipassana, first you have to practice. The Liao Xiang Zui. Liao Xiang Zui means uh, Nimitta Pratisam Vedi Manasikara. This Nimitta Pratisam Vedi Manasikara, it means the attention which can understand the mental image of the object. This is the beginning of the question. For that, you need to observe and investigate, literally in Chinese. Here, he translates as on which the concentrated attention this is those useful contemplations eh? focuses intently huh? so that means uh, with his uh, mind uh, which is focus which has the focus attention he then investigates or observe these uh, uh, pratidimbas, these mental images. Okay. After this, uh, you have penetrated the mental image, then comes the adimokshiki manasika. When you decide about this mental image, this is only a mental image. This mental image is produced by the mind. And when you have understood this is only a mental image, it is produced by the mind. If you practice the um, like this, then uh, in order to attain again the clarity of the mind, you let it go. Then the mind will return to this state of clarity and relaxation. So first you observe it, understand its characteristic, it just comes from the mind, nowhere else. Then you decide about it. This is uh, not reality, but this is the conceptual picture of the reality. And so you don't hold to this picture, you let it go. And let the mind stay in clarity without holding to any image. So that much for today, I see we will continue these stages of Vipassana that is uh, explain here that, that is the uh, I will explain uh, that she know the, uh, the uh, investigate the own characteristic the common characteristic of the object then he puts uh, this together by wisdom of so Vitaka, which is a rough differentiation, and then so Vichara, which is a subtle differentiation. You will um, explain that.
tomorrow. So four, we have nine stages of shamatha and four stages of uh, vipassana. These four stages of vipassana come uh, into being and so this you uh, investigate the mental images, huh? you understand them in terms of the own characteristic and common characteristic, they are all permanent huh? and they have their own characteristic because they are uh, finally these images are uh, the forms huh? and forms are based in the in the four elements. Then uh, you put it together. The Vitarka, according to Abhidharma Kosha, means, uh, means a rough state of differentiation and chetana and will. The Vichara means subtle state of differentiation and the um, subtle state of will. So the first is rough, the second is subtle. It is explained in a different way in Theravada as uh, Vitarka is Abhili Opana. It is rough, it plants the mind into the object. The other one is uh, the Anumajana, huh? the rubbing of the object, it is subtle. Huh? So the same thing explained in a different way, huh? but the basic ideas are the same. So one is uh, more uh, rough state, the other is more subtle state for the differentiation. Huh? But they are both based on differentiation. Okay, so that much for today. If there are any questions, we can go and do them. Otherwise, we will stop here for today. Are there any questions? Uh, yes, thank you. You can ask your questions. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Panta, for the class again. Uh, if I understand well, in, in this practice of Nimita, in the first stage, any uh, any concept is uh, object of meditation. It's not like Theravada that only in Amarupa. Any object is suitable for a vipassana, right? Yes, you uh, you are right. Uh, the, uh, the these images of the mind are mostly conceptual images, no? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, these conceptual images, even the uh, abstract images huh? uh, like uh, the different um, mental factors or like the dependent origination, they can be object of shamatha and also object of vipassana. If they are object of shamatha, they are connected with the uh, continuity of the consciousness without interruption on the same image. If they are connected with uh, the vipassana, you then interrupt this uh, attention and you bring it to a different place, different image. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and the other way around also, like, uh, how, how to explain, like any, any panyati can be, uh, uh, can be used as vipassana, like any panyati, we can inquire on that uh, this is coming from the mind or something like that. Well, actually, the uh, the uh, Yoga Chara Bhumi, Shastra, Shavaka Bhumi brings uh, uh, 10 objects. Huh? The five objects for purification of the mind, huh? like uh, I have explained, huh? among them uh, also the uh, such objects like uh, the uh, six dhatus, huh? mm. 
the four elements in the space and the mind too. For those who are uh, have a lot of pride and the dependent origination, for those who are uh, obsessed with the self, this dependent origination can also, it is an abstract concept in a way, but it can be also used as an object of shamatha and object of vipassana mm -hmm. by the mind. Uh, similarly, all this aggregates the 12 uh, spheres, the 18 elements, the dependent origination again. They are the uh, upaya kaushalyam, they are the skillful means, which can be again used for shamatha and also for vipassana. For shamatha, if you uh, don't change the image, for vipassana, if you uh, investigate the image. And therefore, when you investigate the image, you change the image because uh, you don't keep the same image. I understand. The same image means uh, the, uh, the same flow of the mind. The mind does not change. But in Vipassana, you change the mind. Differentiation is changing the uh, mental image of the mind. Without uh, changing the uh, mental image of the mind, what will you differentiate? Yeah. The, the question, Pante, was more, for example, uh, uh, in Theravada, when, when a concept appeared as, for example, an image of my mother or a concept of justice or whatever, Panyati, the instruction is forget the concept either you broken into kalapas or either you watch the mind that is uh, looking to the concept. But also in Theravada, also here, you have the, you have the uh, panyate which are uh, real and you have the panyate which are uh, not real. Huh? Huh. So, uh, um, so uh, suppose you use uh, a, a panyate which is uh, non real, you can use it to understand that it is just mental image and you uh, avoid it. But if you want to go to uh, analytical meditation, mm -hmm. then in this case, it's better to use the panyati, which is real. But the, the same principle is there that these are just images, conceptual images. Okay. But if, okay. But the, the uh, yoga chara is uh, very interesting because it also uses uh, the analytical meditation like in Shravaka Bhumi. Uh, but finally, you have to come to the, to the uh, meditation of emptiness, which actually um, sweeps away all these images. Hmm? So the, the aim is to sweep away all these images, but still, first you have to understand them before sweeping them away. Okay? So this division on the panyatis, which are uh, corresponding to reality and panyatis, which are not corresponding to reality, is also, we can say, is also useful. Okay, thank so you so much. You, of course, you can use anything that appears in the mind is just mental image, even your mother, your father. But it is uh, real. Uh, it is it is uh, real because it is your mother. Huh? But it is real only in the uh, in the uh, uh, relative reality. Huh? But there are images which are not real even in the relative reality, like uh, the, uh, the, I don't know, the sky flower and so on. They don't exist even in the relative reality. Thank you, Pant. Anyone else have a question? Okay.
No question. No question today. No question. Mm -hmm. Only Vipassi. Vipassi is Agus, no? Is it Agus from Indonesia? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's Spain. It's Spain. Spain. Oh, okay. It's Spain. Yeah. From, <laughs> from Berlin. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought the, uh, we meet in the four elements meditation uh, teaching in uh, Deer Park. Okay, okay. So all the best to you. Huh? All the best to you too. <laughs> so uh, if you are getting deeply interested in this non-dual meditation, and uh, let's try to investigate more. Okay. Okay. I am. I am. So let us uh, transfer merit and we finish for today. Yen the second third forty chin, what an influence on the second May the merit of this practice for two of so that we attain the state of the world.